Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we got a couple of interesting diaries to talk about after the long weekend. Uh, first of all, Didier wrote up how to deal with Word documents embedded in a PowerPoint document. These kind of nested office documents are kind of common when it comes to malware because it uh, is one nice way to evade some detection rules. When uh, DDA, for example, looked at it first with Oli Dump, it just shows up as a compressed attachment. And then, of course, after it's being extracted, DDA was able to identify and further analyze the Word document. After all, Office documents are compressed. They're usually zipped directory structures. And, well, once you have the actual file, it's then not too hard to figure out what's inside that zip file. And Brad published another one of his neat malware analysis write-ups. This is a sample that Brad collected on the 25th, so last Thursday, pretty current sample. Usually when Brad writes about these samples, he sort of attributes them to a particular malware com- campaign. The interesting thing here is that it actually doesn't fit in these sort of any well-known campaign patterns, even though it uses... A fairly classic trick. It arrives as a DocuSign email. That email then includes an HTML attachment that will drop a zip file that then tricks the user and actually opening the zip file and executing a JavaScript. DocuSign has been such a common theme in these uh, scams that uh, I think it was a week or two ago, I received a legitimate uh, DocuSign message and first deleted it as yet another uh, mal spam. Before the party that sent me the email actually uh, reached out to check uh, why I hadn't responded yet. Now, uh, other than that, uh, this particular sample isn't really all that special. It uses scheduled tasks in order to then uh, download additional uh, stages. For the full walkthrough, take a look at uh, what Brad has written up. And as always... His diaries are great because it allows you to sort of follow along with all the PCAPs and the samples that Brad publishes so you can basically sharpen your analyst skills. And talking about zip files, of course, the .zip top level domain is uh, still uh, sort of causing uh, concerns. A penetration tester who is using the moniker Mr. Docs uh, published a blog post showing how these uh, .zip top level domains could possibly be abused. And the trick that they are using here is to basically create a browser window that looks just like what you would expect from a decompression tool like WinRAR. So with some HTML and CSS magic, they make it look all the same. And that way you may be more likely to actually accept that particular malicious file because you're thinking you're interacting with the local tool, not with a remote website. And PyPy announced that by the end of the year, all accounts that maintain a project, any project or organization within PyPy will be required to use two-factor authentication. Last year, PyPy already did a smaller rollout for uh, most downloaded projects and such for particular administrators were required to use two-factor authentication. This will now be expanded to all users that, again, are maintaining a project or organization. So for an end user, if you're just uh, using pip to uh, download packages, nothing really has changed. Well, what may change, of course, is hopefully that uh, PyPy will get a better handle on some of the impersonation attacks that they have seen. Two-factor authentication will make it more difficult for an attacker to take over an existing account, which certainly has been one of the problems that PyPy is struggling with. 
And then in miscellaneous vulnerabilities today, we do have a uh, command injection and hardcore credential vulnerability in MX security. This is a uh, industrial network security management tool. So designed for OT networks as Moxa says. And then we also have approach escalation vulnerability in Cassandra, which is the Apache NoSQL uh, database. Any user with uh, JMX access may able to execute commands as an administrator if audit logs are enabled. Well, that's it for today. And yes, on Friday, I said there would be a podcast on Monday. I forgot about the Memorial Day holiday here. So that's why there was no podcast on Monday. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.